Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video we are going to take a close look at some weird looking Famicom clones. So here at the channel I've reviewed so many of these Famicom things, but these particular ones are like quite interesting because they can play more than Famicom for once. Yep, we have left the station of the Famicom only systems. And this time we're going to have like some quite interesting ones. Or are they even worth picking up now here? Yeah, let's find out. But we have two different versions that we're going to take a close look at today. So it's going to be any, mini, mighty, mo. I'm going to take you with me today. Yeah. <laughs> so first, let's take a close look at the Retro Game Edition. And after all those years doing reviews, you're still like finding new versions. This is using a 5 volt with a micro USB for the charging or the adapter. An HDMI, so we do also have like an AV out, so that's pretty cool. So you do have like this dual option. So I must say, like the first impression is that this thing looks quite interesting and quite weird at the same time. Okay, so the controller is just a four button, so I'm more like, all oh, right, help me out with this one because how the will this work with Mega Drive? Oh wait, it don't. It doesn't. That like it makes no sense whatsoever. So yeah, you know, like they're trying, but. So far I know there is no way of adding a new controller because even they have like an original po controller ports you have a problem that the let's say a different controller with the same con con connection will not work on this device. So this is what we're going to get of course I mean, they give me like an adapter this time cool cool and then we do have like the user manual yep so it's going to be the toilet, toilet paper deluxe oh here we do have like this thing called the HD retro game and the type is the EMX the 033. All right, so this is like a really pointless manual. There's nothing much in it, and it's even filthy. Ugh. When you're looking at the device itself, it has a very interesting, let's say, form factor. Yeah, it looks like a NES Mini Classic, but it isn't. We're going to get two controller ports. I think they're like upside down over here, port one and port number two. Then we do have like the reset button over here, and here we're going to get the on and off switch. And at the back we're going to get this weird looking, let's say, white, I think it's a sticker that they basically put over the connections. But we're going to get a micro USB, AV out, an HDMI out, and we do have like an, a TF card, I love to say it, but there's a micro SD card. And this thing is, yeah, seriously like 512 megabyte. <laughs> so we're take a close look at the menu, and I must say, like, let's first boot it up. It's going to be quite interesting. We're going to get ourselves the same boot up like the X series handheld. Think about the X6, the X16. And yeah, another weird thing is like, you can see like it switches from the NES and out of nothing it switches to a second menu over here. But what are we going to get? So we do have like NES, Super Famicom. And again, Super Famicom, it's pointless because we're only having like four buttons on the controller. System settings, Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance. We're just going to test it out. And oh yeah, this is absolutely the same kind of quality and software. Oh boy, I can tell you that is not a good thing, simply because... Oh man, what the hell is... What the hell? Effect settings... Language... Adjust screen offset... Okay, so that's basically what we're going to get. Let's see if we can change this out. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, it seems to be I cannot set the other one. That's whatever. So let's try NES. Let's see what we're going to get. Are we going to get a typical like menu? All right. So that's it. That's the main menu. There is no SPS ratio whatsoever. So let's try some games and let's see how good or a bad emulation is. Before we're going to boot up a game, you do have the option to load the progress and we have settings over here. Here we do have the option to have a different screen size. But let's put it on scale, just, oh no wait, it is original size. That's the thing that we need to choose. So let's see what happens when we're going to restart the game. Yeah, all right, so I'm hoping select and start will bring me back to the option, settings, scale. Let's see what happens What we're doing to do that. And return the game. Ah, there we have, we do have express ratio with this. But when it comes to the gameplay of the NES, it's working just fine. I don't see any weird screen tearing whatsoever. Or I'm just missing it. 
All right, so let's press select and start. Then we can make a safe progress. We can argue it over here. And that's it. There's no, a little bit of room. There is no like a really like cool preview picture or something like that. So that's basically how it works. And we can basically like load it up and it automatically goes back to into game. And let's see how the other system will run. Ooh. But let's take a close look at the folders inside the SD card. I plugged it in my PC. I'm using a Windows PC, by the way. So you can see the first folder is called game. So if you need to like set everything up like new, this is what you need to do. So first thing, let's take a close look at the specification. You can see like it has been formatted to FAT32. Very important. If you're using a different format, it doesn't work most of the time. It's only like 512 gigabytes, so we don't have a lot of space. But the files that you want to add are not big. So we can still add a lot of stuff. So here you see like we have the GB, Mega Drive, NES, and Super Famicom. So you need to drop in the files itself. And basically, if you're going to do this, we're also going to try different files. Let's say Game Boy, Color. Let's see how far we can basically go with this. So Mega Drive, there is nothing in here. There are some NES games we have already seen. And of course, Super Famicom. So let's add all of the games. And that's the only thing, drag and drop. And we're recognized by the system itself. All right, so I think I can manage to play this game because I only need to have the jumping and the punching. I did have some slowdowns, but... It's pretty damn cool. We have like express ratio on every single game and system. Oh, I messed up. Absolutely. All right, so let's try some Sega Genesis. Uh, it seems to be that it runs pretty damn good. Don't hear any weird things going on with the audio. So it's really surprising that it actually works. Maybe the same for Genesis. We can play a couple of games. Because we don't need all the freaking buttons. But it's pretty damn cool that we can't even play this. But besides that, you cannot play every single game. All right, so let's take a close look at some GBA. So far, I am surprised. Seems to be working just fine. I personally really love the controller. Like the D-pad is absolutely amazing. But for GBA, we do have, let's say, enough buttons. If they map them correctly, that's a different story, but... Alright, so it's a school that you can even add some Game Boy Color to this. Retro Game Edition, what a kind of weird thing it was, but let's take a close look at the Retro Game Edition. Edition. So this is kind of interesting. Already mentioned, like it has like a lot of cool features, and it even comes with a very cool box, which you can see over here. But what are we going actually going to get? Let's find out. I think the most interesting thing is like the controllers. I just wanted to see it for myself. 
Okay, this is like a unique design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, did I ever seen it like this? No, we do get like two slider joysticks, but, but it's kind of even weirder. It's like this one is slider, a slider joystick. Think about the PlayStation Portable. This one is having like a different height. It's an interesting option. I wish that I went for like just normal, let's say, Nintendo Switch joystick lookalikes. There's four separate buttons that need to be deep head. Feel quite nice, to be honest. If you look at, if you're going to do it like this, but very short travel, A, B, H, Y, like very tiny. Okay, when it comes to the center, there we're going to get some interesting things. So we do have like the home select start and plus minus, I'm guessing can even adjust the volume or something like that. So the controllers are interesting. We do have like some shoulder buttons and they feel quite nice. Clickish, but nice. So the overall controller, yeah, I must say like the quality is cheap. And of course, let's smell it. Hmm, they don't smell coming at all. They come with, that is even like weirder, they're just like the Mega Drive connection. Oh, by the way, you cannot use a Mega Drive controller. I've tried it so many times with these devices. It, you think it is, you think it can work, but it isn't. So this is just a family computer system, completely black edition. When you're looking at normal, the normal was gray or something like gray with black, but it's just a completely black edition. At the back, we're going to get an HDMI, the all famous built-in SD card, an 8 gigabyte. So yeah, that's not a lot. The funny thing is that we do have the option for an AV out and the input micro USB for the board, the front power and the reset and to the controller ports. And that's it. Comes with an HDMI cable. It doesn't even come with a freaking AV cable. Like what's the point of having an AV, AV function if you don't have an AV cable? And there is also no power supply. And uh, this thing called be the AMX 1033. I think I've seen this manual before, but it's this famous toilet paper manual, like always, nothing special. Oh, here it says, like, it doesn't build in games, need download games to TF card. Oh, okay. So, I think the maximum is 32 gigabytes, and I need to use a 5 volt charger. So, let's get my one for my storage. And yeah, it says, uh, like, an NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, GBA. Maybe we can play some Game Boy Classic, but it is. And the system settings. Huh. All right, so let's take a close look. What are we going to get? All right, so let's plug it in and let's see what we're going to get. I have seen this menu now before because this is the new standard when it comes to NES minis. It looks kind of cool, like this, basically this background with the flaming like logos. I think it's pretty damn cool. But the thing is, what can we expect? We do have like the same logo and kind of things going on when it comes to the X16 handhelds, all right? Wow, seriously, I went to the settings and there are no freaking, hello, there's nothing happening, weird. Okay, so let's give it a reset, let's see what happens now. And I think we're going to get the same intro like the handhelds that we've seen before, like the X16, X9, stuff like that. I can tell you that's not a good thing normally. Uh, another interesting thing, like you can see like it has some built-in NES game feature, but when you're making some folders on your SD card, you will have the option to add more games. All right, so let's go to the settings again. Okay, there we go. Power saving, language. Uh, I can change out the annoying key issue. We're going to do that. That's much better. We can format the card, something you don't need to do. All right, so let's change out the offset. Can we change something about this? So there we go. All right. I have no idea how to basically change out the other one. Oh, there we go. Need to press the Y button. All right, let's go back. So that has been adjusted. And let's go some into the games and let's see what I can do over there. When opening the file, we do have the option to make a quick load, quick save. We do have the settings, keyboard mapping, screen size. And we need to have the original size. If I'm saying it correctly, we don't have like the original express ratio. So that's pretty damn cool to have this. Starting the game, pressing restart, yeah. But, okay, crap, I messed it up. Press the home button, will bring me back over here. Let's do the screen size again, and let's do on scale. All right, so let's go return the game, and there we have. All right, nice, let's try some games, let's see how it works. What I find quite interesting is that the volume button actually works. It's a weird feature on the controller, but I personally really like it. Okay, so let's play a game. 
I don't see any weird screen tearing whatsoever. So the emulation of the NES part is pretty damn good. Cap. Sounds a little bit slow. You can see the extra ratio works basically for every single system. It automatically like changes everything to scale. To be honest, I find it not like the perfect SPS ratio, or it can be me, but a little bit too like squeezed together. You can just it did struggle here and there. Okay, shoulder bolt having mapped correctly. I find it a little bit choppy image, but maybe that is me. That sounds kind of weird. It's more like there's an echo or something. Also, the ring sounds not like it should be. Everything sounds like a little bit off. Turn effects are here. You can hear like the ring sounds should be different. I've played the game so crazy a lot that I still messed that part up. <laughs> the sound is absolutely garbage. That that. Not like it's supposed to be. But also here, like it sounds kind of weird. I have this sound. I've played this game so much. That's also the reason like, I keep repeating playing game because I can just hear and see things. Especially the hearing. It's like you can see. I do have this idea. We have like a smaller delay, a very small delay in the audio. It's kind of interesting doing so many of these reviews. They still cannot manage to get it right, you know. The gameplay in general is not bad, but it's just the audio that completely fucks up this game. You can see, like, it's a couple of seconds delay. Absolutely garbage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So which one is my favorite one? I'm just gonna be honest, both of them. I don't really like them in general because there are so many options out there when it comes to these like say mini nest things. They're like outdated. And when it comes to let's say other game boxes, you don't pay a lot more and you're going to get so much more value. Also those the things will have some problems here and there or some limitation, but this is way better than this. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it will be great to see you in the next video. Thank you.